All right, before we get into the story, I'd like to remind everyone that this was just for fun. I'm not a professional writer, and a lot of these posts I made the day of without any forethought to the next day's post. They might be kind of jumbled here and there. Although each post depicts the prompt for that day, it doesn't mean that it's a different day in our traveler's life. Quite a few take place during a same moment or in the same area or in, within the same realm of time. And so you, you might be seeing that the pages are flipping, but that doesn't mean that it's the next day in the traveler's world. I think that's it. <laughs> I don't know how long this video is gonna be, but it's gonna be a doozy. But let's 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 get into this. Let's crack into it and and read the traveler's thoughts. All right, let's get started. I would like to also add that while I'm reading the story, I'm not going to break outside of the traveler's thought processes. So I'm going to explain just a little bit really quick on this entry page and then after that I am only going to be reading what I wrote on Instagram so we'll see how this goes <laughs> first of all this is the prompt list with all of the creators by the by their word so I just wanted to make a quick little map of what I was going to be drawing on each day. I will also note that my style did change. So all of it was always going to have like this Polaroid, but it was going to be first, like I said before, trading cards. And then that's when I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to put all of this into a sketchbook. It kind of formed out to me actually just drawing the Polaroids instead of using other types of watercolor paper. So this is where we're at. I was going to only use the nibs inside the Polaroid and have more of a realistic feel where everything on the outside was going to have more like a bujo or a scrapbooking type of feel to it. But you'll see after a certain point that actually changed and I was more invested in the storyline than making it look like it was a bullet journal. You'll start to see a shift in styles and you'll start to understand, I guess, the further you go with the traveler and the journey that she's on, that I'm also evolving in the story and in the illustrations while we're going. And please forgive that ink spot. <laughs> I can never get those out. Okay. All right. So let's begin. The clinking of glasses and quiet chatter fills the air as I gaze at the wall in front of me. What is this creature that hangs? Antlers adorned atop the head, a blank expression. Blank. Something I know all too well. That's why I'm going on this quest. <laughs> Frank would have loved that I thought quest instead of travels or journey. Let's hope that I am able to document the life that surrounds me as I march forward. Not knowing what to drink, I sought guidance from the barista. Do you believe in magic? She whispered and leaned closer. I hesitated, and before I knew it, a strange concoction was in my hand. This somewhat unappealing-looking blue liquid was said to wow and amaze, but it was activated with lemon juice. Intriguing. I shall try this and report my findings. Memories swirl around me as I observe this quaint cafe. Sweet smells permeate the establishment and make my senses come to life. Although I cannot dwell for too long, I want to stay curled up in the corner with a good book. I want to get lost here. Reminders are everywhere that I must keep moving forward. Gratitude. There is an abundance of gratitude before I move on. The crisp crunch of the leaves under my feet as I make my way to the signpost remind me of autumnal childhoods. Cold noses, rosy cheeks, bright breezes, hot apple cider and pumpkin pies. If I closed my eyes, I could almost take in the spice. But now, when I open them back up, I will be alone again. At this crossroads full of arrows, which one shall I follow? A trail less traveled through these winding paths. 
I can't put my finger on it, but I'm guided by this particular series of lines. Perhaps it's because the silhouette reminds me of simpler times. Picking pansies with my sister in the field next to our home came to be my favorite. Pansies adorned her bedside as well. They were her favorite flower. Soft flutters tickled my leg as the breeze rustles my clothing. With the sun beaming down on my face, I shade my eyes so I can gaze at the field before me. A dance of flowers is before me as they bend to the will of the winds. Realizing now what the flutters are, I pick up a dandelion and allow the air around us to create movement for the seeds. These ethereal little tufts flit and twirl along the path as if in a dance before finding their landing spot. Flitting to and fro, this little hummingbird rarely rests. Wings a blur. A small memory drifts into my consciousness but is immediately masked with fog. I shake my head as if that would help, but all I can depict is a hug. The warmth of an embrace before it disappears again. History and past experiences are meant to be lessons to help guide our future selves. But what if we have pockets of time with nothingness? Coming across these precious artifacts of life spanning time beyond our comprehension is humbling. Centuries of evolution and adapting to continue to live. Nature. Will I evolve or shrink in the unknown? To preserve myself, my consciousness, has my evolution taught me to fight or to flee? Nestled in warmth and comfort, this harvest mouse and the little lizard friend. To feel this, blankets surrounding cozy and comfortable, fuzzy socks on my feet, feather pillows fluffed behind my back. This feels known to me, like I could reach out and feel the cup of tea in my hands. Then darkness. I hear rustling and murmured breaths from beyond. Where did the warmth go? The whispers turn into music and it's met with gentle fingers tracing the air. My sister's laugh melodically dances as my body twirls. I smile as I watch the butterfly's wings mimic the memories of my sister's whimsical and effortless movements. Movements. A flicker. Something long recessed is pushed forward. Tubes, stagnant and labored breaths, met with darkness once again. The sounds of the rushing water bring me out of my trance. When did I enter the forest? I lean down and fill my canister in this magical clean water. Something pulls me to know that it's safe to drink. Moments pass as I admire the world around me. Fresh. The sun begins to fade behind the hills and I know I must find my way to a resting place soon. Breezes and light melodic chirps of crickets lead me to a path. A warm glow comes from the cabin. I was planning to set up camp in the forest, but the moon rises high. A howl of a coyote crescendos in the distance and it makes me close my eyes. Not out of fear, but as if singing me a nocturne. The smell of ginger and sweets permeate the air and draws me closer to the cabin. Do I dare knock for sanctuary? An entire area dedicated to charting physical growth for their children. The notches whittled out by a knife marking each birthday celebration, making a permanent memory in the door frame. How fortunate that this family was able to open up their home to a weary traveler such as myself. Warmth. Cedar fills the room as the crackling fire persists. Comfort among strangers is a new sensation for me, but I'm thankful. Toasted peanut butter and jam sandwich. The insides create a concoction of salty and sweet as it melts with the heat. Flashes of thoughts swirling, crumbs on the tablecloths. The crunch of the bread echoes in my head as I remember this very sandwich. My mother used to make this for me. As quickly as the memories came, they left. The ice water slips down my throat to remove the stickiness of the sandwich. I smile as I take another bite. I wake up to the chirps of the warblers. How do I know bird sounds? At the kitchen table sipping on a spice-filled chai tea, two shadowy figures emerge from beyond the doorframe. I met with big toothless yawns and plushies embodying an alpaca and a salmon? 
Glasses of freshly squeezed orange juice are distributed as they continue to wipe sleep from their eyes. Bouncing with enthusiasm, they explain who their plushies are, Paul the alpaca and Frank the salmon. Paul and Frank. This is all too familiar. A splintering of details flash before my eyes so fast they make me rub my temples. I need answers. I need clarity. After saying goodbyes and giving great thanks, I wandered around to some of the local shops. Almost appearing out of nowhere was a sign. Clarity. Walking through the door felt like my lungs expanded and I knew that this was the next step to maybe help me find answers of my past. Eyeing different tinctures and crystals, I found myself gravitating towards quartz. Continuing my walk, a poster of the wall depicting several phases of the moon catches my eye. I take a deep breath and move closer. As I get closer to the moon phase chart, the sleeping cat on the floor stretches and yawns. My footsteps awake its slumber. I kneel down and extend my hand for an outreach of friendship and the cat accepts by pushing its head against my fingers. Hours could be spent in this crouched position. Reflection. Looking at my own experiences, I don't think I have friends. Not ones I can remember, at least. This desire for connection is raw, and for a few brief moments, my soul feels satiated by this interaction. Like the phasing of the moon, we're still a whole entity, but only showing different parts of ourselves at a time. The full moon could be interpreted as our most vulnerable. This moment, I am a full moon with this experience. After many laps around the shop, my basket is now heavy. I bend down to connect with the cat one last time. A flash in my brain of my family in the living room with our cat curled up in my lap. Laughter from my sister rings through my ears and my mother brings out a basket of dinner rolls for us to snack on. <sighs> She's burnt the chicken again. She's definitely a better baker than a chef. Dinner is going to be late. My teeth cut into the soft roll. It's still warm and smells of sourdough. The jingle of the bell hanging above the shop door snaps me out of the trance. Can I help you with your basket, miss? I look up and see the proprietor standing above me. The main merchant of this establishment, a main source of comfort, came from this cat that kept following me around. There is this intense stare in my direction, but not threatening as if we are bound together. Connection. I miss my cat curled up in my lap. It's been so long. Another memory seeps in. I'm crying as I hold someone in my arms. I can't make out what it is. There's a deep sadness that sweeps over me. The long chain makes the crystal hang to the midpoint of my chest and I feel positivity. The feeling is simply mesmerizing. Trudging out of the area with these coveted little shops, I feel the necklace swing to and fro. Peace. Maybe it's just in my head, but the fog in my brain doesn't seem scary right now. I see an overgrown pathway, the weeds and vines daring me to continue forward. A shadowy building looms ahead. Making my way to the looming structure, a haunted feeling overcomes me. Chills ripple like a xylophone up my spine. I briefly stop to take a photo. Raising my camera to my eye, a crackly voice comes from behind. The museum is open, dear. A jump and a click has made the photo slightly skew. I quickly turn around and am met with a weathered, short, and stout caretaker of the grounds. With a swift motion of the arm, I found myself following. There's a slight musty smell like an old library. Creaks and cracks in every crevice, but there's an eagerness to explore the contents of the building of wonders. As I'm walking through the artifacts, I see a dramatically lit sarcophagus. Is this even real? What if there's still a body embalmed inside? Something encased in a tomb-like structure. Trapped. I'm pretty sure this is not what they envisioned for their final resting place, to be dug up and displayed. My head! The flashes return and it's dark. It's cold. I hear crying. Sobbing, in fact. I hear myself crying. I try to raise my arms to check my face. They're bound to my body and I can't free them. I start to panic, shortened breaths, a feeling of weight as if I'm suffocating. As quickly as the vision came, it left with a blink. Sweat is pouring down my face and my legs can no longer hold my weight. 
I collapse on the floor as I try to catch my breath. A handkerchief appears next to me and I look up at the caretaker of the museum. A gentle and knowing smile spreads across the face. It's a look of patience and understanding. My eyes dart to the far wall of the museum. As I stare, the feeling of tentacles wrap around my wrists and pull me into the ground. I'm throttled back into the flash of unfamiliar. Bands are wrapped around my wrists and ankles as I strain to break free. Bound. There's a syringe, a prick of the skin, and I shriek to no one. An emptiness fills my body, and a sleepiness takes hold. Through tears, my eyes close once again. Darkness. I feel weighted, yet submerged in a watery mask. Floating as if non-existent, as if there is no world, no gravity, no space. Just darkness. A streak of white crosses my path. Stillness. There it is again! A voice booms forward and I hear gasps. No one is around me, but I can hear everything as if we are all in the same room. The Kraken swirls around you and your party! Another flash of white and I can feel a swoop beside me. It's closing in on you! What do you do? I remain motionless, afraid that any type of movement will take me out of this moment. An eye opens in front of me, but instead of an attack, it looks scared. I take my arrows and fire them into the head of the Kraken, says another voice. The creature blinks twice and swims away. I'm back in the museum, facing the mural. My family used to play D&D together. This was our last session that we ever played. Our last session before. Flames are everywhere. Every part of my body is on fire. Writhing around, I can't put them out, and they engulf my entire being. A snap of the fingers from an unknown beast and the flames immediately squelch. Sirens wail in the background, but I cannot take my eyes off this creature, a deteriorating beast in front of me. I can see its vertebrae, yet it's still alive. The closer I inch my way towards it, the more I see myself. Wendigo. A cryptid creature said to be devoid of nourishment, so it continues to feed on everyone around it, never feeling satiated. This smell, this burnt smell, is familiar. This destruction, it's all too real. No, I cry out, this isn't me. I tear away from the gaze of my own reflection and start to run. The stinging of my tears blur my vision as I weave between the trees, zigging and zagging, not knowing if I'm headed in a direction of safety or more horror. A gust of wind flings my body into the air, and I'm unable to comprehend the ground from sky. Spinning wildly and out of control, I can't seem to process my surroundings. My body lands with a thud. It's the first time I'm able to see the source of wind as it towers over me. I realize that this winged angel is my sister the one person I was supposed to protect, and I was the reason she. I was the reason everyone in my family. No, this isn't right. My sister is safely tucked in her bed. My parents are shuffling around, murmuring to each other about the day's events. They'll be there when I come home from my journey. My memories, like a wave, they all come crashing down on me, tearing my favorite shirt as I shimmy down the nearest tree coming back to my home in flames, sirens wailing, running in to rescue my family, flames surrounding me, the feeling of being yanked out and then blackness. Still on the ground, I sob. Are you ready? My sister's voice was always melodic, but now is echoing like a symphony of words. What? Ready for what? I'll do anything to bring you back. Please, I should have been home. I should have been a better sister. I'll go in your place, I'm ready. I shriek, tears streaming down my face. A wistful look sweeps over my sister's face as she says, Are you ready to accept that you are worthy of happiness? She becomes translucent, as if visually telling me our time is growing short. With one last phrase, she is gone. I love you. My soul grows dark, and I feel myself slip into a slumber caged within my own skull. A weighted feeling overtakes my body and I can't pull myself from it. I'm alone. It's my fault. What have I done? What did my sister mean? 
Why did she ask if I was ready to let happiness in my life? I don't deserve it. I should have been with my family, and now I'm all alone. Sinking further into my sleep, sinking further into the hollows of my own brain. And I never want to leave. This is what I deserve. I deserve to be stuck here forever. As I sink further into myself, there's a light laughter that can be heard. I try to shut it out, but it grows in my ears. I am back in our living room as we hover over our character sheets for D&D. When pigs fly, will I have a companion? My dad shouts, laughing in his robust, thunderous way. I, squawkers, the mighty goblin rogue, take on thee, weakling pig. He rolls the die and it lands on one. <laughs> My mom giggles behind her dungeon master board. The flying pig squeals with glee as you are now bound as companions. He starts rooting around in your bag for treats. She topples over from laughter as my sister and I can't hold it in anymore. I remember this night so clearly. We named the pig Chicken, and whenever Dad would say his ridiculous phrase, when pigs fly, we would all start laughing hysterically about Chicken. A smile spreads across my face with this memory. As the game draws to an end, he scoops us up like bags of potatoes and carries us off to bed. He always states before closing the door, you both are my sun and moon. May you always feel my love as I always feel your light. Clinking of dishes and quiet chatter fills the air. Swirls of cinnamon and vanilla encompass the kitchen. Mother is making her cinnamon rolls. She always adds in different ingredients as if experimenting to find the perfect recipe. My sister is swirling around the kitchen with flour all over her face. I smile. There is so much joy everywhere. Paul and Frank are at the table eagerly awaiting the delicious treats to come. You're over early, I exclaim and go to hug them. Some of my favorite people in the world all gather together. Mother is dancing around while taking the cinnamon rolls out of the oven. We're all laughing and singing as we prepare breakfast. The minutes turn to hours and it's time for the twins to go home. I watch at the door as they scamper down the street to their house. Our parents being best friends has helped in our bond and I couldn't ask for better friendships. Love. I look back to the kitchen and can see it slowly fading. The sun is shining on my face. A path I have yet to take beckons me. I walk up to the wooden planks that stand before the doorway, a doorway that seems to lead to nowhere a doorway that's black inside. An anxious feeling starts to weigh me down. The feelings for my trip start to peek into my brain. The suffocation, the loneliness, the regret, the shame. I stand on the last plank of wood clutching my quartz necklace, ready to turn around and go down the path of nowhere. Two voices are heard in the distance. They echo Frank and Paul's cadences from the darkness and growing louder by the second. It's reminiscent of a chant. Mantra. It's not your fault. You deserve happiness. You deserve love. You are strong. You can do this. It's not my fault. I deserve happiness. I deserve love. I am strong. I can do this. The weight pressing down on my chest lessens. I take a deep breath. My left foot is the last object to be seen as the rest of my body disappears into the darkness. There's darkness all around me. I continue to hear Frank and Paul's voices as they chant. More voices start to sweep in and out. A symphony of words strung together from so many people in my life. Each voice brings another glimmering light until my entire being is surrounded. All of these words that I had trained myself to tune out because the monster inside would devour them before ever reaching my brain and my heart. I feel my pulse growing, the warmth all over my body, floating with exuberance as I finally let these positive thoughts consume me. I am worthy. Before I know it, I burst into a bright white light. I am whole. And now, I am the brightest.
brightest light in the dark. So that concludes <laughs> this video. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.